wore these for ten years, Mr. Dorn. The territory of Nevada says that pays me up for what I did. I know you don't figure it that way, but I'm free now. And I'm back. And I'm here to stay. Cordell! You get out of this town. I told you, Mr. Dorn. I'm here to stay. Grace? What, Mr. Cartwright? Uh, welcome home. I don't need anything from you, Mr. Cartwright. I don't need anything from any of you. Always real trouble. You sure you're looking at the right man, Roy? Some mash and uh, some corn. Oh, <laughs> you better keep that down to 50 pounds this week, Seth. <laughs> Hop Singh says if those chickens get any fatter, they'll start looking like horse. <laughs> Anything else, Ben? Something wrong? I think there is, Seth. All right, if you want to know. I didn't think you should have done what you did out there on the street a little while ago. I mean, going over to Trace Cordell and offering him your hand that way, right in front of Paul Dorn. Oh, would you rather I did it behind Paul's back? Oh, you know what I mean, Ben. Yes, I think I do. I thought you were a friend of Paul's. I am. Well, then why'd you do it, Ben? Because I believe that when a man has served his prison sentence for something that he's done, that should be the end of it. Oh, well, that's easy enough for you to say. But if you were the one that Trace put in the wheelchair for the rest of your life, you'd feel just like Paul does. I hope not, Seth. Trace Cordell's got a lot of gall coming Seth, back. that was ten years ago. Trace Cordell was hardly 17 years old, and you knew his ma and him just as well as I did. Are you excusing him for what he did? I'm not excusing him for anything. When Trace went into that bank, I don't believe he intended to rob it. <gasps> oh, nothing. Trace was a desperate, frightened boy with a dying mother. He had a gun. He shot Paul. He made a cripple out of him. No, oh, what's the use of talking? Oh, my boy will pick up this stuff tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I've been looking for you. I have a message from Mr. Dorn. It's for you, too, Mr. Hubble. He'd like you to be at his house tonight at 7 o'clock. What for? He's invited about 20 of the leading citizens in town to a meeting. A meeting? It's about Trace Cordell, but laying plans to keep him from settling down in Virginia City. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, Trace has every right to stay in this town if he wants to. He has to work if he wants to stay here. He has to eat. Of course he does. But he won't be able to do either one, not in this town. He won't be able to get a job slopping pigs. He won't be able to buy so much as a pound of beans. People in this town will freeze him out. Now, what makes you the spokesman for the people in this town? After last year's drought, do you know how many merchants and ranchers around here owe the bank money on demand notes? Yes, I'm beginning to find that out, Paul. 
A man fights with everything he has to fight with. A man? Yes. Well, you're not fighting like the man that you used to be. I'm not the man I used to be. Look at me. Cordell got ten years, but I got life. Cordell is free, but I'm still paying. Oh, please. Oh, now we hear from my helpmate. You agree with Ben. Forgive and forget. Well, I haven't forgotten it. And I won't forget how you and Cordell used to hold hands walking down the street like a couple of moon-calf lovers. Paul. If you ever so much as look at Trace Cordell again, I swear I'll... I used to think there wasn't a man in town who felt as sorry for you, for what happened to you, as I did. I was wrong. I don't feel nearly as sorry for you as you do for yourself. See how things were? Yeah. Got any plans? What you gonna do? Get a crop in. Raise some stock. Well, of course, that's, uh, that's gonna take time. Where I've been, Mr. Cartwright, a man learns that there's just one way he's ever gonna make it. That's just one day at a time. I don't think it's gonna be that simple here. I know. I got the message coming through town, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Paul Dorn's a bitter man. Maybe you might be better off if you went somewhere new where they didn't know you and started fresh. The way I figure it, if I can't be free here, I won't be free anywhere. Besides, I want to lick this place. Broke my father's back and my mother's heart. For their sake, I'd like to make the farm work. Well, like I said, you're going to need a stake. Now, it just so happens that uh, we're a little shorthand in the Ponderosa, and I could sure use you and your rig. I told you, Mr. Cartwright, I don't need any help. Now, you listen to me, Trace. I know the Cordell pride. Your father had it. Your mother had it. Is there anything wrong with pride, Mr. Cartwright? The Cordell kind? Yes. But this farm didn't break your father. His pride broke him. This farm didn't break your mother. Her pride broke her. Now, wait a minute. And it's breaking you, too. Well, you didn't learn a thing in the ten years you were in prison, did you? I tried to help you. The whole town tried to help you. But that Cordell pride of yours wouldn't allow for help. Why, you wouldn't ask for help when your mother was dying. You had to try to steal for her. Why are you talking like this? Because I think it's about time that you discovered the difference between friendship and charity. I'm not offering you charity. I'm offering you a job. Mr. Cartwright. Yes? When do I start? First thing in the morning. That's it. Trace starts work for us first thing in the morning. What good's it going to do Paul Doran to run Trace Cordell out of town? 
Well, keep them away from Clara for one thing. Don't forget they were almost married before this thing happened. <laughs> sure were. You know, I can understand Paul's bitterness being confined to that wheelchair and all, but I sure hoped he'd be a bigger man than that. What sort of job you got figured out for Trace anyhow? Well, you know that hay we sell the army? Well, it's got to be stored, and the army has rented Luke Schaefer's barn in town. I figured we could store it there, and then the quartermaster could pick it up anytime he wants it. So we use Trace? Well, one man with the rig making a trip a day, you could complete the job in plenty of time. Paul, don't you think Trace making a trip into town every day is going to be sort of asking for trouble? Well, there's a possibility of trouble whether you ask for it or not. And Trace might as well face up to it now as later. That's all right, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like that job. Well, Trace, there's uh, one thing that I think you ought to know. There were 20 men at that meeting that Dorn called last night. And they represent the feeling of the whole town, and they all agreed that you shouldn't be allowed to settle in Virginia City. That doesn't scare me, Mr. Cartwright. Well, maybe I made it sound a little worse than it is. Some of them have to go along with Dawn, others want to, and the others just don't know any better. Well, I'm not going to make it any easier for them by staying out of sight. Oh, no one's asking you to. The choice is yours, Trace. Where is that hay you wanted hauled? <laughs> Come on. You think the sheriff meant it last night when he said not to give any trouble to Cordell? Hey, Mr. Schaefer? Yeah? Mr. Cartwright asked me to deliver this hay to you. Pull it in here. I got a contract with the Army to store that feed, but that don't mean I got to work with the likes of you, Cordell. No, you want help unloading, you tell Ben Cartwright to send a man in with you from now on. I'll do that. Why don't you move on, Cordell? Why don't you get out of town before somebody takes a bull whip to you? They have. Many times in the last ten years. How about this one? It's real pretty. I seem to remember you having one just this color. That was that, that Easter time before I went away. That was a long time ago, Trace. I, I walked you home from church. Your mother had me stay to dinner. Later, your, your pa let us use the buggy. We drove out to Sunset Falls. We don't have anything to say to each other anymore, Trace. What do you want, Cordell? Mr. Cartwright asked me to pick up some supplies he ordered yesterday. Well, you go back and tell Ben to send somebody else. I don't want you setting foot in my store, do you understand? I understand. Then get out and stay out. The Army rents this barn of yours for you to store hay in it, is that right? Yeah. And if you don't store any hay in it, you don't collect any rent, is that right? Guess so. Guess so. All right, then. You better start helping Trace Cordell unload my hay when he brings it here. When the Army comes here to pick it up, it's going to find an empty barn. Now, do I make my meaning clear? Look. Yeah. 
Yeah. Seth, how much do you figure I spend in this store of yours a year? Hmm. Around 3,000, I guess, figuring everything. Mm -hmm. Well, until Trace Cordell gets a little common courtesy from you, you're going to have to count on 3,000 a year less. Well, that ain't fair, Ben. Fair? You consider what you've been doing fair? Well, that's different with you. You're a rich man. You don't need Paul Dorn. You don't owe him anything. You owe Paul? Uh, I guess I've been going at this the wrong way, haven't I? Maybe I ought to go where, where the sickness starts. Don't you think you ought to discuss this with Mr. Dorn, Mr. Cartwright? What's this all about? Mr. Cartwright wants to transfer his account to the Miners and Cattlemen Bank in Gold Hill. What's Mr. Cartwright's balance? Take care. But Mr. Dorn... Do it. Ben. This hurts, you know that. Well, like you said, Paul, a man fights with anything he has. Cordell's nothing to you. Why are you making this your fight? I think this is everybody's fight, Paul. There's no middle ground. You're on one side or the other. Even if it costs men like us our friendship? At the price you're asking, I don't think I can afford your friendship. I stopped for a rest. Nice spot. Yes. Do you come here often? Yes. I used to fish that stream. A little further down, Forbes Mill. I can remember when the trout used to practically stand in line to get caught. But that was a long time ago. Trace? I've never been here before. I was waiting for you. I'm sorry about the way you're being treated in town. I told you I understood. Trace, why didn't you write me? Why didn't you answer my letters? I couldn't. Why not? Well, it's hard to explain, Clara. You don't know what it's like living in prison. You can't let yourself feel anything. You can't let yourself remember how it was before, what it might be afterwards. I saw a boy once. I watched him count the days for five years. He killed a guard, tried to escape, a week before his sentence was up. I counted the days for five years, too. I'm sorry, Clara. After mother and father died, there wasn't anyone left. I know what it is to be alone. I understand why you married. No, you don't. Maybe I did marry him because I was lonely and afraid. But I also thought I could help because of what happened to him. I also married him because I was angry. Angry at you for spoiling everything. All our dreams of getting married. I better get onto the ranch. Trace. I didn't love him. I still don't love him. I love you. I'm not ashamed of it. Trace, take me away with you. I'll go anywhere you say, just take me with you. Ah, 
Do you remember what day of the week this is? I guess not. <laughs> Payday. I know it's been a long week, but the weeks will get shorter. I'm not so sure, Mr. Cartwright. Hey, what's the matter? You, you sound kind of down in the mouth. Well, it isn't that exactly. It's just that, well, I guess I've been wondering whether it's all worth it. Virginia City isn't the only place in the world. You know, I recall having that discussion with you when you first got back. I know. And maybe you were right. Maybe I would be better off somewhere else. You're the only one who can really be the judge of that. to Gold Hill on business. He won't be back until tomorrow. Come inside. What are we going to do, Trace? What would you have done if I hadn't come back? You did come back. You'd have gone on being Dawn's wife. What are you trying to say? If we went away together, where would we go? Does it matter? We belong here. We belong anywhere we can be together. And it can't be here. You don't want to leave Virginia City, do you? Not yet. Why not? Everything stopped for me here. This is where I've got to begin again. Is that really important to you? I thought it was. I don't know anymore. Well, you'll have to decide. Clara? Are you really as sure of yourself as you say you are? You've been married to Dawn for five years. Can you just stop being his wife without any doubts, any questions? It's getting late. I better go. I'll be waiting for you. Mr. Dorn, I thought you were staying in Gold Hill tonight. I changed my mind. Maybe it's a good thing. Deke, you asked the other day if Sheriff Coffey meant it when he warned against any rough stuff with Cordell. Yeah? Well, maybe tomorrow you ought to take a couple of your friends and find out. Glad that miserable job is over. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm gonna get a beer.
soon as I heard. I've made up my mind, Clara. We're going to leave town. Where are we going to go? You said it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. When? Tomorrow night. I'll meet you at town at, at Schaefer's barn, nine o'clock. You still want to go, don't you? From the moment you came back into town, all I needed was the courage to admit it. I heard, too. I thought I could help. Now that you're here, I suppose you could take care of him. I've got to get back to town. I'll make sure he gets back all right. Goodbye, Therese. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. pretty good, didn't they? Obviously Dorn's men. Could you identify them? In this town? What good would it do? Well, Sheriff Coffey could arrest the men responsible. Could he put the whole town in jail? The whole town isn't to blame, Trace. Isn't it? Well, anyway, nothing like this will happen again. From now on, any time you go out, one of us will be with you. That won't be necessary, Mr. Cartwright. Well, you let me be the judge of that now. I'd like to ask a favor. Sure. I'd like you to buy my farm. I'm leaving Virginia City. Oh. So 
Sorry to hear that. Now that, uh, that first day, you came back, you said something. Yeah. If I can't feel free here, I can't feel free anywhere. I was wrong. Will you buy my place? Uh, that's a good piece of land. Worked properly, it could be a good investment. How much? Three dollars an acre. It's worth more than that. Not to me. I come by the Ponderosa tomorrow. Thanks. When do you plan on leaving? Tonight. Alone? Yeah, you're going off with Clara Dawn, aren't you? Well, it won't work, Trace. It just won't work. You can fool yourself now, but you can't fool yourself forever. One day you're gonna wake up hating yourself for what you did, and then you wind up hating each other. If you thought Clara was going away with me, why did you give me the money? One doesn't have anything to do with the other. I agree to buy your farm because, well, you want to leave Virginia City, and that's all right if you want to. But that doesn't mean you have the right to run off with another man's wife, no matter how much he wants to go with you. I didn't say I was going to do that. Anyway, it's, it's my life. I've got a right to do what I want with it. Trace going? How come he ain't working? If he's afraid to go into town because of them jesters, one of us could ride in with him. No, no, he's not afraid. He's just leaving. Well, what about his farm? I just bought his farm. Why? Well, I figure if a man has the right to stay if he wants to, he has the right to leave if he wants to, so I'm helping him leave. Well, what made him change his mind? I don't know for sure. I think I'll go over to his place after supper.
Get her out of here. Paul, please listen. Take her to the house. Keep her there. Paul, please let me explain. Paul! Hey! Oh, please hurry. Get yeah, Paul's gonna kill Trace. Where is he? He's in Schaefer's barn. Get 
Come in. I was expecting the sheriff. How do you feel? You know, you and Grace both pretty lucky. An accident like that could have been fatal. Accident. And that's what Trace told the sheriff it was. What's he trying to pull now? I wanted to kill him, I admit it. Why is he lying to the sheriff? Ah. Now. Why do you think that Trace went to Luke Schaefer's barn last night? Meet my wife, take her away. Well, he uh, he went to to meet your wife, all right, but not to take her away. He went to tell her that he was leaving without her, that he'd finally realized that she wasn't in love with him. I should have let them meet, so he could have told her he was leaving. Would serve her right. Oh, Paul, what's the matter with you? Is your hate so completely blinded you that you can't see what's in front of your face? Now, when you, when you went to the barn, you saw Clara. What was she wearing, a traveling dress? Did she have any bags that were packed, any, any luggage? Was she prepared to leave? No, because she'd gone to the barn to tell Trace that she wasn't leaving for the same reason. She couldn't have told you that. She's been upstairs in her room ever since the fire. Yeah, you know, she couldn't have told me, but when Trace pulled you out of there, you were both lying unconscious on the ground. And to which one of you do you think she went? Which one? Let her tell you yourself. 